Anatomy of Uterus Here, the topic of discussion is going to be detailed anatomy of uterus and the objectives of lectures are as follows. First, we shall see the part and position of the uterus and then we will cover blood supply and innervation, lymphatic drainage, histology of the uterus, its function, hysterectomy, tubal ligation, and finally, we will conclude our topic with a quick summary. Uterus. The uterus. In simple language, it is commonly referred to as the womb. It is about 8 centimeters long and is a hollow muscular organ which lies in the female pelvis and related dorsocranially on the bladder. Here, we can see various anatomical parts such as the body, cervix, and the isthmus. While its gross anatomy sounds pretty simple, its histology is a little more complicated. It consists of three major layers, but the exact histological structure depends upon the state, if it is in the or the proliferative phase. Parts and position. As we've seen earlier, the uterus is divided into the cervix, isthmus, and the body, which is also called as the corpus. The cervix, or neck, it measures about 2.5 to 3 centimeters in length. It lies subperitoneally and is divided into the vaginal portion, also known as the ectocervix, and a part fixed in the parametrium called supravaginal portion or the endocervix. The junction between the cervix and the body is at the internal os. Endocervical canal connects the uterine cavity with the vaginal cavity and extends from the internal os to the external os. The cervical canal has two orifices the internal orifice to the isthmus and the external orifice to the vagina. The external os in a nulliparous woman is round, whereas in a parous woman it is transverse. The isthmus is about one centimeter long and is a narrow passage connecting the cervix and the corpus. The corpus or the body lies intraperitoneally and has a triangle lumen through its connection to the isthmus and both fallopian tubes. The base of the uterus is called fundus. At term, the fundus may extend as high as the xiphoid process, that is, vertebral level T9. In most women, the corpus is bent forward against the cervix at the isthmus, also known as antiflexion, and the long axis of the uterus is inclined towards the vagina, known as antiversion. The shape and size, however, may vary depending on age, number of pregnancies, and hormonal status. The uterus is surrounded by the circumjacent connective tissue known as parametrium. The peritoneum covers the uterus almost completely, except the ventral part of the cervix forming two recesses, ventrally the vesicouterine pouch and dorsally the rectouterine pouch, also known as a pouch of Douglas. Blood supply. Its major blood supply is by the uterine artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery and partly from the uterine branches of the ovarian artery, which is a branch of the abdominal aorta. Uterine artery supplies vagina, uterus, medial two-thirds of the uterine tube, ovary, ureter, and the structures within the broad ligament. The uterine arteries are tortuous and permit expansion of uterus during pregnancy. 
the venous blood drains through the uterine venous plexus into the internal iliac vein, which empties into the inferior vena cava. Intrinsic uterine circulation. Uterine artery gives arcuate or coronary arteries which anastomose on the anterior and posterior surfaces of the body of the uterus in the midline. Radial arteries arise from the arcuate arteries and pierce the myometrium centripetally, anastomose with each other, and form stratum vasculari in the middle layer of the myometrium. From stratum vasculari, basal and spiral are given to supply the endometrium. Spiral arteries supply the functional zone of the endometrium, which is cast off during menstruation. And basal arteries supply the basal zone of the endometrium, which helps in the regeneration of the denuded endometrium. Innervation. The nerves are derived from the inferior hypogastric plexus. Sympathetic preganglionic efferent fibers are derived from the neurons in the last thoracic and first lumbar spinal segments T10 to 12 and L1 to L2, which synapse on the postganglionic neurons. These fibers produce uterine contraction in non-pregnant uterus and vasoconstriction. Uterine contraction in pregnant uterus is under oxytocin hormone. Parasympathetic preganglionic fibers arise from the neurons in the second to fourth sacral spinal segments, S2, 3, 4, and cause uterine inhibition and vasodilation. But these activities are complicated by hormonal control of uterine functions. Lymphatic drainage. Fundus and upper part of the body. Pre- and para-aortic lymph nodes along the ovarian vessels. Few lymphatics from the lateral angles of the uterus travel along the round ligaments of the uterus and drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Middle part of the body. Drain into external iliac nodes from cervix on each side, the lymph vessels drain in three directions. Laterally, external iliac and obturator nodes. Posterior laterally, internal iliac nodes, which is the major drainage. Posteriorly is the sacral nodes.